Adobe Animate is a great tool to create HTML5 ads, and in this video, I'll show you how. Follow along in this tutorial and learn how to create an HTML5 display ad in Animate and later upload it to Google's Ads Creative Studio. Other topics covered in this lesson include adding keyframe animation, creating a button, and exporting the JavaScript HTML. So let's jump right into this video and start creating. All right, let's kick things off by creating a new document in Adobe Animate. I'm gonna click on the Create New button. That'll launch the new document window. From the options up top here, let's choose Web and the width of our display ad is going to be 336 pixels. Hit your tab key and the height will be 280. Hit your tab key again and that'll jump to the frame rate. The frame rate, I'm gonna set to 30 so you could do the same. And then just ensure that the platform here is also set to HTML5 Canvas. Once you have those selections in place, go ahead and click Create. Now that the document is set up, let's take a closer look at the design in Adobe Illustrator. Here's a look at the digital display ad for a work management software company that will import to the Animate stage shortly. Before we do, have a look at my layers panel. I have all the content on separate layers, background, shapes, image, logo, and so on. What this allows us to do is add animation to the content separately and all these layers will carry over to animate when we import it to the stage. Now, keep in mind, you could definitely design the ad in animate. However, importing a file from Illustrator can really come in handy. Let me show you how. To import the Illustrator document to animate, simply go up to file, import, and then import to stage. Choose the Illustrator document. In this case, it's called Google underscore ad.ai. From the drop down, make sure that you have Adobe Illustrator selected. Otherwise, you won't be able to select the Illustrator document. There are some other file formats that you could choose from here, including Photoshop. We want Illustrator. And then go ahead and click open. From the import to stage options, collapse the layers here so you can see them a little bit better. You can see that they're all there, call to action, offer text, second title, main title, logo, image, shapes, and background. Ensure that the place objects at original position is also checked on. Once you have that, go ahead and click import. You can see that the creative is imported in the exact same position that it was in the Illustrator document. I'm going to click my timeline panel here and you can see that all the layers that we had in Illustrator also carried over to animate. What I'd like to do next is set the duration for this digital display ad. In my timeline panel, I'm going to pan over to about the 20 second frame mark here. So just scroll over and once you get to about 20 seconds, click on the first frame in that sequence and then hold shift and click the last frame. This will select all the frames in the layer stack here. And then on your keyboard, just press F5. What that does is insert frames to lengthen the duration. Another thing I'd like to do, and this is totally optional, but oftentimes when you're importing an Illustrator file into Animate, the line spacing or even the tracking may come in a little different. You can see that here in my main title, Enhance Your Team's Productivity. I'm gonna fix that now. So click on the selection tool and then just select the text frame. Make your way over to the properties panel and then choose object, the object tab. And then down below here, under the paragraph section, you can see my line spacing is set to 0.8. I'm just gonna decrease that to about minus four, looks good. And that will allow me to go in and maybe move this up, the secondary text, and even the offer text, you can click that, move that up a bit, space things out as needed. So now we can make our way back to the beginning of the timeline. Just move the playhead to the very beginning. And we can focus on adding animation to the main title. So go ahead and click main title. I want to convert the main title into a symbol. This will allow us to add animation in the timeline. So with the main title selected, go up to modify and then choose convert to symbol. I'm going to name this main title text. And under the type drop down, let's select movie clip. Go ahead and click OK. With the main title still selected, let's create another layer right above it. To do that, click on the new layer icon. 
And let's name this layer mask because this will become a mask layer. With the mask layer selected, go to your toolbar and choose the rectangle tool. Go ahead and draw out a rectangle that covers the main title. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure that the text is hidden and you can't see it. Go back to the selection tool and in your timeline in the layer stack, right click the mask layer and choose mask. Go ahead and unlock the main title and you can see that the shape is covering the title again and that's okay. Next, go ahead and click the main title and with your selection tool, hold your shift key down and then just press the down arrow key on your keyboard to nudge the main title down just outside of the shape. Next, move the playhead to the five frame mark and then click on that frame and press F6 on your keyboard to insert a new keyframe. Alternatively, you can go here and insert keyframe that way as well. I'm gonna drag the playhead to the 15 frame mark, click that frame on the main title, and again, press F6. With this frame selected, do the opposite. Hold shift and bring that back up so it's hidden behind the shape. Something like that is fine. And before I lock this layer, I'm actually going to make this 20 seconds. So I'm gonna click this frame and then just drag it to the 20 frame mark like so. Just wanna make sure that that's lined up. Yep, good. So now I can go ahead and lock that and you can see that the shape disappears, but I have this where it'll come in and it'll reveal. The only thing we have to do here is right click anywhere between those two keyframes, this one at the five frame and the one at the 20, click anywhere in between, right click, and then choose create classic tween. And you can see now we have a much smoother transition than the point A to point B transition that we had. Another cool technique before we move on is changing the easing of this sequence in this classic tween. So go ahead and click anywhere in that sequence again. And under the properties panel, under the frame tab, go down to classic ease, and we want an ease in out and then double click quint. That one's a good one for this one. It almost has a snapping effect. So have a look now if I press return on my keyboard, it comes in a little bit cleaner and it just looks a little bit better. Have a look again, looks pretty good. So now we can move on and animate the image. To do that, let's click on the image layer and let's go up to modify and convert to symbol. And let's just call this image. Go ahead and click OK. And now our image is a symbol that we can animate. I'm gonna move the playhead to the 15 frame mark and I'm going to click on that frame in the image layer and press F6. That inserts a new keyframe. I'm gonna move my playhead to the 35 frame mark and do the same thing. Click that frame, that empty frame, and press F6 to insert a new keyframe. I'm gonna move my playhead to the first keyframe in this sequence, and with my selection tool, I'm gonna to hold shift and just drag this right out of the canvas. Just drag it right out, right at the bottom. Now you can see a lot of the contents hanging over the page. If you wanna see the artwork without the content hanging over the edges, click this icon here, clip content outside of the stage, and you can see that now it's clipped and it's masked out. Great, so I'm going to drag the playhead to the second keyframe and you can see that the image goes back to its original position. So I have point A and point B. But remember, we wanna add a classic tween. So click anywhere in between, right click, create classic tween. And now we have a much smoother transition here. Only problem is you can see that we have the previous frames before that classic tween. So we just have to click the first keyframe, hold your shift key, click the, the last frame here, and then just press delete to remove those frames. And now we have this, the title, and then the image. Let's click anywhere in between those two keyframes in this sequence and do the same thing with the easing. Click classic ease, ease in out, and double click quint. And now if you see, this looks a lot cleaner. One, two, almost like a snapping effect and it looks a lot cleaner when you look at the two together. So that looks good. Next, I'm going to focus on the second title, the offer text, and the call to action. 
you can see them here in my layers panel. I'm gonna click on the second title first, go to modify, convert to symbol, and let's call this second title. Again, make sure that the type is movie clip and click okay. Let's click the offer text and do the same thing. Modify, convert to symbol, and I'll call this offer text and then click okay. And then I'll click the button here, the get started button, and then go to modify, convert to symbol. And let's call this call to action. Again, just click okay. I'm gonna move the playhead to the 35 frame mark and I'm gonna click on all three of these frames here and I'm going to press F6. I'm going to drag the playhead to the 45 frame mark and do the same thing. Hold shift and then click the other two and press F6. Next, I'm gonna drag the playhead back to the 35 frame mark and select all three of those keyframes again. And under the object tab, under color effects, let's choose alpha. And ensure that the alpha or the opacity is set to 0%. You could see again, it's 0% and it goes back to 100%. This will be the final animation in this digital display ad and it'll be a subtle fade in from the 35 frame mark to the 45 frame mark. Click in the first sequence, hold shift and click the other two, then right click and create classic tween. And you can see now we have that subtle fade in from the 35 frame mark to the 45. Let's delete all the previous keyframes. So click on the first one in the call to action, hold your shift key and click the last on second title layer. And then simply just press delete on your keyboard. Now let's have a look. If I go back to the beginning and press return, return is how you hit play, one, two, three. So that's good timing there. I'm actually happy with how that's paced as well. Let's look at it again, return, one, two, three. Good, and if you'd like, you can also do the same thing here with the easing. So click on the first, hold your shift key and click on the other two sequences. Go to classic ease, ease in, out, and then we have quint. That's just to remain consistent with the entire creative. So we have one, two, three. I'm actually happy with how that looks. Before we publish this, I'd like to create yet another button that covers the entire ad. I'm gonna click on the top layer, so call to action, and I'm gonna create another layer. And this layer will be called button. With this frame selected, click on the rectangle tool again and draw out a shape that covers the entire canvas. Click on the selection tool, click on the shape, go to modify, convert to symbol. Let's call this button and let's change the type to button as well. Now you can click OK. Double click that shape and that will drive you into its own separate timeline. Now the user experience here is a viewer will click anywhere on this shape and it'll target the URL that we're going to direct them to. But in order to do that, we'll need to create what's called a hit state. Right now it's set to up. So I'm gonna click that frame there and I'm gonna drag it to the hit state. Once you've done that, click this arrow to go back to scene one. You'll notice now that there's a tint to the button shape and that's okay, that's exactly how it should look like. Now you're probably wondering, how do I share the JavaScript and HTML? Well, this next step will cover just that. Now to publish the JavaScript and HTML, go up to file and choose publish settings. In the publish settings window, ensure that the JavaScript HTML box is checked the output name is the name of the document you're working on. I'm going to click this little file folder. And I'm going to create a new folder and call this Google HTML5 add. I'm going to click create and then I'm going to ensure that it's saved to this folder here. You also have the option to make responsive. This just ensures that the ad is responsive regardless the screen that it will be viewed on. Once you have those settings in place, go ahead and click publish. Now I've gone ahead and opened the folder that has the HTML, JavaScript, 
and the images folder. And if I go ahead and view this in my web browser, you could see that it's operating and working the way we set it up. But in order to get this over to Ads Creative Studio, there is a little bit of coding that's involved. But don't worry, you don't have to be a professional coder for this next step. We'll add two simple lines of code that will allow us to upload the HTML5 ad to Google. You can open the HTML with any source code editor. In my case, I'll be using brackets. I've provided this text document in the lesson files where you can access the HTML we'll be adding. This is what's called a click tag, and it basically tracks the clicks once it's been uploaded to Google. Let's go ahead and select the first line of code here and Command C to copy, that would be Control C on Windows. And we wanna place this in the head tag of our HTML. So place your cursor in the head tag and then press return and then paste that code in. Now there are a couple things that you have to do here. You'll notice under the content equals in the width, we know that our ad is 336 by 280. So change those dimensions, 336 by 280. Let's go back to our text document and let's select the second line of code, Command C, go back to your source code editor and let's scroll to the very bottom and we wanna place this code outside of the head tag. So when you see the close head, press return and Command V to paste that in. As a last step, just save the HTML and now we're ready to upload it to Ads Creative Studio. All right, I'm in the Ads Creative Studio dashboard now, and I'm ready to upload my HTML5 digital display ad to the platform. To do that, click on New, and then I want Display and HTML5. Go ahead and drag the zip folder containing the HTML, JavaScript, and images. From here, go ahead and name your new project. So I'm just going to name this Google HTML5 ad and I'll put final from the platform drop down. You can choose one of the two. I'm just going to choose campaign manager 360 and click create. Now I don't have a 360 account, so I can't go any further than this page here. In order to go to the next step and export this and publish it to go live, you're going to need a campaign studio account. But you can see on the left-hand side here that my ad is working properly. Remember, we set it to 20 seconds, so you're gonna get quite a bit of a delay before it repeats again. And that's because I don't want it to keep looping so quickly. I want a nice delay so people can consume the content and then click on it. Now, one last thing here, the click tag is set to google.com. You could set it to anything you wanted at this point. So I would put maybe my website, Montilla Design. Com. So that would be the click tag for this ad. Once you've done that, you can click save. Then from there, you could click prepare for export, and then you could export the ad from there. So that's how you create an HTML5 display ad using Adobe Animate. Amazing work. Thanks again for watching. And if you'd like more videos just like this one, check out the playlist right up here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.